I would like to put forth our position vis-a-vis -vis Christianity. That Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. We are made to believe that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth, which many modern-day Christians do not believe today. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission, and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. As such, the Muslim and the Christian is going together. But the parting of the way takes place on three bases. Number one, the original sin. Number two, the divinity of Christ. And number three, the crucifixion. These are points of differences between the Muslims and the Christians. With regards to the subject of crucifixion, as you see here on this uh, banner here, it says crucifixion, fact or fiction. Now the Holy Quran gives a, a direct answer to that question. It says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Wa qawlihim inna katal inna katal al Masiha fi sabnu Maryam Rasulullah. He said, and they said in boast that we kill Christ Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Apostle of God. The Quran goes on. They, they didn't kill him, nor did they crucify him. But it was made to appear to them so. And those who dispute therein are full of doubts. They have no certain knowledge. They only follow conjecture, guesswork, fiction. وَمَا قَتَلُهُ يَقِينًا For a surety, they killed him not. It calls this event described by the Christian as crucifixion, C-R-U-C-I-F-I-X-I-N, crucifixion, to fix a person on the cross, anyhow, by nails or ropes or strings, and have him killed. To crucify means to kill by hanging or impaling on the cross, F-I-X-I-O-N, crucifixion. We say it is cruci, F-I-C-T-I-U-N, fiction. It sounds the same, crucifixion or crucifixion. The spelling gives us the difference between the two. That in the Islamic point of view, it is a fiction. Now, when we say that it is a fiction, the Christian brings forth, produces his book of evidence. He says, here, we have a written record by eyewitnesses and ear witnesses to the happenings some 2,000 years ago, that Jesus Christ was hanged and killed on the cross some 2,000 years ago. Now, what I'm going to do tonight is, instead of telling you this is what the Muslims say, this is what the Quran says, I said, look, I want to show to you that the Bible that you hold in your hands, whatever version you have, you will find the verses that I'm going to quote and the argument I'm going to adduce. See, Jesus Christ, after his alleged crucifixion, alleged crucifixion, he returns to that upper room where they had the Last Supper. And he walks in and he, he says, Shalom Aleichum in Hebrew, meaning peace be unto you. When he said peace be unto you, his disciples were terrified. So I'm asking my learned friends, I have been doing this for quite some time, my learned friends of Christianity, why were they terrified? Because when you meet your long lost master, your uncle, your grandfather, your priest, your guru, the Arab and the Jew will embrace one another, kiss one another in the neck, that's how they meet one another, show their love and compassion for one another. Instead of doing that, the disciples of Jesus were terrified. I want to know why. Why were they terrified? So the Christian tells me, he says, you see in Luke chapter 24, we are told by Luke that they were affrighted because they thought he was a spirit. 
The wordings are, they thought he was a spirit, a ghost, a spook. So I'm asking, did he look like a spirit? Did he look like a ghost? Did he look like a spook? The Christian says no. Then I said, why should they think the man is a spirit when he didn't look like one? So he gets puzzled. This is my experience with the most learned men of Christianity. They get puzzled. Why would they think the man is a spirit when he doesn't look like a spirit? I said, the reason is that the disciples of Jesus, they had heard from hearsay, people were talking, that the master was hanged on the cross. They had heard from hearsay, people were talking, that he had given up the ghost, in other words, the spirit had come out, he had died. They had heard from hearsay what people were talking. That he is now dead and buried for three days. A man with such a reputation, you expect that man to be stinking in his grave after three days. Because all the knowledge of the disciples was from hearsay. Because Mark chapter 14 verse 50 he says that at the most critical juncture in the life of Jesus, all his disciples forsook him and fled. All his disciples, they forsook him and fled, which means they were not eyewitnesses or your witnesses to the happenings. The knowledge was from hearsay. So on hearsay evidence, if you know about a man who is dead and buried, and when you see such a person, seemingly that person, naturally you are terrified. Because you are thinking the man is a spook, a ghost. So Jesus Christ, wanting to assure them that is not what they are thinking, he says, and I'm quoting, 